officially starting the recording. <laughs> okay, so uh, good morning. So we are still, uh, and I have to tell you something funny, which was funny to me. I'll tell you later. Um, but I did have some suggested problems from some learners, and that included questions 14 and 15 on the first assignment with standard normal distribution and I think it was four and five five and six on the second one or three three and six four and six I think what I have up here is four and six which should cover the leftover stuff that I didn't do yesterday um, on the second assignment so all right, so I'm going to get into it now. I'm going to uh, draw pictures of my situation because it helps visualization. You don't necessarily have to, right? But you should uh, to help you figure out, you know, where the area is or you know what you're looking for and such. So. Here we go, we're, we're starting word problems. And so I, I suggested middle 10%, yeah, yeah. And I have that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so, sorry, organizing my head again. All right, so, <clears throat> You're starting your word problems, and I suggested when you have the longer word problems. Yeah, I got you, Siobhan. Um, you read it at least, I thought I stopped that. You read it at least three times. Um, now, these might not need that many times, but when you get into like your confidence intervals and your hypothesis testing, you're going to have a lot of word problems, and you're going to want to read it three times so that, again, the first time is to get an idea of what's happening. The second time is to organize what you have or what you're given into your mathematical notation. And then the third time is just to verify. And if you need to, another another time. So, and there's nothing wrong with that. Assume that the readings, so here's my first sign. <laughs> Assume that the readings at freezing on a bundle of thermometers are normally distrib distributed, I'm gonna underline that, with a mean of zero degrees and a standard deviation of one degrees. That's important information. I'll convert it the second time I read. A single thermometer, a single thermometer is randomly selected and tested. Find P70, which they didn't, don't have to tell me it's a 70 percentile, we should know that. Which this is also telling us what that means, the temperature reading separating the bottom 70% from the top 30%, which is also something we should know just by seeing the notation P70. 70th percentile separating 30%, 70% of the way in. So <clears throat> I underlined stuff that was important. Obviously, normally distributed is important because otherwise I can't do the stuff that I learned, right? It has to be this low, high, low, the symmetric curve. Um, the center of the curve is the mean, which they tell me. Now, I'm going to convert the mean and the standard deviation into notation. And we have, you know, kind of all thermometers. So I'm using a population mean, which is mu. And the mean temperature is zero degrees Celsius. And the standard deviation population, standard deviation sigma is one degree Celsius. And there, you know, I'm, I'm focusing on the notation that I use and what they mean for a reason also, because that's gonna come back. So I'm just like reminding. Um, so what I said yesterday was, if I have a normal distribution curve and the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one, I automatically know that I'm on a standard normal distribution curve and these are z-scores. And then the center is always the mean, which in this case is zero. So I, this is just the first sentence, right? I pulled all this information out. And if I need to read it again, I will. Assume that the readings on, on a bundle of thermometers, they're normally distributed, which allows me to have this low, high, low kind of symmetric curve. The mean of it is zero. The standard deviation is one. This is population mean and standard deviation for like all these thermometers. Um, a single thermometer is randomly selected, so I'm selecting one. And I'm focusing on that also because later on you're going to be selecting more than one. I'm selecting one for now. Find P70, the 70, uh, 70th percentile. All right, so P70, I guess I'll put my answer down here. 
P70 is the notation that we learned back when we did like quartiles, was week four or something. P77 for per, uh, seven -eighth percentile, which separates the bottom 70% from the top 30, right? Because we talk about 100%. So if I have 70% here, then obviously 30% would be there. Now, if I'm talking about the bottom 70%, I'm talking about like more than half, right? More than half, more than half on the low end. So if I um, if I cut this curve in half, right, right here, then 50% is below that because this is the halfway mark. So 70% being lower than some value is going to push that value over here. And this is a Z score. Or also known as P70 for this particular example. And um, separating the bottom 70%, so the shaded region, because remember percentage or probability percentage is always the area under the curve on this kind of normal distribution curve. So if I'm knowing percentage, then I'm knowing area. And it's the bottom 70%, which is 0 0.70 in, in decimal from the top 30. So that means up here is 30%. Now I don't necessarily need that part, but it's good to know obviously that the sum is one. And P70 is this value here, which happens to be a z-score. They don't really ask me that, but it happens to be a z-score because I'm on a standard normal distribution curve. Um, and if I wasn't, it would be some data value and I would represent it with x. But I know it's standard normal distribution because the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. So what I realize here is that I know the area under the curve and I want the z-score. And basically what you guys are doing with this week is either normal CDF or inverse norm. Those are the two options right now on your calculator. So if I know the area and I want the z-score, which one do I use? Do I use normal CDF or do I use inverse norm? So do you remember if I know the area and I want the z-score, which one do I use? Inverse norm. Yes, you got it, inverse norm. Um, and then, so let's refresh inverse norm, normal CDF, all the stuff so far that you need is in bars, right? Second bars. So we want distribution. So we're going to press second and bars. And really, like the two options for this week, normal CDF and inverse norm, is like number two and three. So it's just which one? We know it's inverse norm because we want the value, we know the area. And it just so happens to ask us, what is the area? So that's an indication that this is the one that I would use when I know area, right? And the area that, and we talked about this yesterday, um, not everybody has this option here where you could tell the calculator the location of the area that you want. Um, you can update your calculator or whatever if you want to have that because the TI-84, you know, pluses, they, they're fancier calculators, they should have it. If it doesn't, automatically your calculator assumes left. So if you don't have this option, your calculator is automatically assuming that the area that you give it is in the left tail, okay, or to the left of the value that you want, which is perfect because that's what we have here. We know the area to the left is 70% or 0.7. So I'm going to put area 0.7. My mean is zero. My standard deviation is one. Um, it's already, you know, left. If I have these options, I want left highlighted. If I don't, it automatically assumes left and then paste and this is the order in which it you know it comes area to the left mean standard deviation if you have that extra option it tells you where it is 0 0.5244 so 0 0.7 0 0.1 and then this is that extra option if you have it and then 0 0.5244 typically rounding uh does it tell us how to round that does it ask us to round it a specific way. It doesn't ask us. Um, it doesn't ask us or it doesn't tell us. So I would say typically now it looks like it's rounding to three, but typically with Z scores, we round to two. But 0 0.52 and then I think it should take a few different options because it's not telling you how to round it particularly. But given that it's a um, a z-score it should be two but okay so um if you see this notation it's basically asking you for a percentile okay um 
So let me do this one also. So this was, oopsies, what was it, number 14? No, what I just did was number 15 on the first assignment. Okay, similar to that. Obviously, I think your numbers should be different, but it's similar to that one. <clears throat> Basically understanding that notation. Now this one, I didn't draw the curve, it gave it to you, but I didn't draw the curve for a reason because assuming like you don't have it, how would you know? Let me see the chat here. Is it you guys or someone? Um, Hold on. It's so crazy because it's like, um, okay, it's like the, the links are just all over or something. I don't know. Okay, so she should be in soon. All right, this is the next question that I want to do, or I was asked to do. This was number 14, which is a good example because it's a little different than what we did yesterday, but still similar. So this one, assuming I don't have the picture, you do on number 14, but assuming I don't have the picture. Um, all right, so about percent, oh, about blank. So this is blank, this is a drop, this is your, this is where you input your answer. So it didn't come out when I copied and pasted it, but about what percent, what? <laughs> okay, about what percent of the area under the curve of the standard normal distribution? Now they didn't have to tell me this. Look at that, they give me everything, yo. The standard normal distribution curve, which I should know has mean zero and standard deviation one, is outside the interval z equals, notice they're talking about z scores because they're on a standard normal distribution curve, is outside of the interval from negative 1.46 to 1.4. So this is interval notation. If you guys are not familiar with it, which you will see a lot when you get to confidence intervals, this is an interval basically saying the same thing here. It's the same thing as this, okay? This is what this interval notation means. So it's saying from one uh, from negative 1.46 to positive 1.46 not including those values it's the same thing this is set notation this uh this is um inequality notation and this is interval notation they mean the same thing if you're not familiar you probably saw interval notation in algebra though if you forgot you'll see it a lot later on that's why i wanted to talk about that all right so what they want us to do, we're on a, a standard normal distribution curve. Let me draw it. Um, it's, it's drawn for you on the problem, but assuming that I'm not given that, I know it's a standard normal distribution curve. They don't have to tell me this. Because it's S and D, I know the mean is a zero and the standard deviation is one, and I automatically know that the values along the horizontal scale are z-scores. I automatically know the center, the center of this curve is zero automatically just based on the fact that they tell me standard normal distribution they don't have to tell me this um but so negative 1.46 is like over here to the left and positive 1.46 is over here to the right so we're talking about these two now this interval that they're talking about represents in between those two but they're talking about outside of the interval now beyond so outside of the interval is going to represent the area to the left of this and the area to the right of this outside of the interval right this interval is representing in between here just so you know your notation okay just so you know what it understand what it means this is what this part is representing but we went outside of that now they drew the picture for you on the problem but you know, that's that's me interpreting it, right? So this time, um, I want the area and I know z-scores. So in the last example, I was given area based on the fact that I was given a percentage and I wanted the value that corresponded to that percentage and I used inverse norm. And in this one, I want the area and I know the z-score. So what do I use? 
inverse norm or normal CDF? Which one? And you could chat, you can whatever, because I have my right chat on there. <laughs> normal CDF or inverse norm? Normal CDF. Yep. <laughs> normal CDF. Now, the thing about this, you sound so excited. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I could tell the enthusiasm is real. Um, I'm going to color coordinate for a second. <laughs> and because of the fact that I can do only do one area at a time. So I'm going to do, I'll call this area one in green. And I'm telling you, because if I know area one, I automatically know area, I'll call area two, uh, make it yellow, area two over here. But if I know area one, I automatically know area two because it's a symmetric curve. And obviously the area to the left of this should be the same as the area to the right of this. They're the same values, right? Um, but I'll prove it to you anyway. So um, number one, area to the left of this value, this z-score. She said I use normal CDF, she's correct. Remember when I go normal CDF, where's my calculator? I go second bars, and then it asks me to bound my area. Give me the lower and the upper bound, you know, the lower value and the upper value that, that bounds the area that you want me to find. That's what it's asking, right? Okay. Um, so my lower bound is already in here for whatever reason. Obviously for this particular area is negative infinity, right? All the way over there. And I could just put a very large negative number, but this is what this represents in scientific notation, negative one E 99. So here, um, negative one. Remember, this is your negative sign, by the way. I wanna make sure I stress that. This is the negative and this is subtraction. If you use this 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 um, subtract, subtraction sign, for negative, your calculator is going to tell you you have an error. It only understands this is negative and then this is subtraction. So you're never going to use a negative sign for subtraction and you're never going to use the subtraction sign for negative, okay? Otherwise, you're going to get an error. You're going to be like, well, why am I getting an error? I've had that every semester too. So negative here, one, and then the EE -E here is how you do the E part, the times 10 to the negative, to the whatever. Second, and then comma to get the E and then 99 to indicate basically 99 zeros after that negative one. So negative one with 99 zeros, that's a huge negative number. My upper bound of this area that I'm doing over here, the highest value of this shaded region is negative 1.46, right? My mean is zero, my standard deviation is one because I'm on a standard normal distribution curve, which I should know, but they tell me also and then I'm going to paste. Now, uh, this area to the left of negative 1.46, which is indicated by 1. So I'm going to say negative 1, E99, negative 1.46, 0 and 1 is approximately, we're going to take 4 because it's representing area, 0 0.0721. 0 0.0721. Haley just asked. Okay. I think we're doing the exact one that you're asking, Haley. And then the one before we did, I'll show you after. So um, this is just the area to the left of negative 1.46. Now I'm going to claim that if I do area number two, area to the right of positive 1.46, which I'll do, I don't have to do it, but I will do it. I'm going to claim it's approximately, it's the same. And the reason is because it's a symmetric curve. So I'm talking about the same values on opposite sides and the area, you know, out in the tails, those areas should be the same. But for practice or whatever, <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and find it anyway. So normal CDF because I want area. Second bars, normal CDF. This time I'm bounding area two. So the lower part of this area is positive 1.46. And then the upper part of this area is positive infinity, which we represent with that positive one 
and then second, and then comma to get E, 99. Or you could just put a really large positive number. I used to put one with a bunch of zeros after it too. Whatever's easier, whatever works, as long as it's a large positive number. So this is my lower bound, upper bound, mean is an deviation, and then a J. Same thing, 0 0.07, so the same exact thing. 0 0.0721 again. Now, technically I'm not done. I hope that makes sense why they're the same. I didn't have to find both of them, but I did. But <clears throat> if I want the total percent of the area beyond, then I have to add up the two areas. I have to add them up. Or it's the same thing as taking one of them and doubling it. You could literally take 0 0.0721 and double it because we're saying this plus itself. So I would take whatever's in the calculator and double it. 0.1443. So this is my answer. Okay. Even though there are two separate areas and I necessarily found this one by itself and this one by itself, it wants the total area outside of that interval, the total area. Now, be careful because this is my value, this is my answer, but it's not in percent form. And because it's saying about blank percent, about what percent, this is the blank part, this is where you input your answer, I need to convert this to a percentage, 14.43, and then percent. I don't have to put the in percent sign because it's in there. So this is, this is an example of where you're converting your value to a percent because it's representing an area and an area can represent a percent, but it's also asking you 4%. So you need to put it in percent form. Okay, which some of us might forget to do. So I think some of the errors here might be based on the fact that maybe you find one of the um, one of the areas and you put that as your answer, you forget to double it. And then maybe perhaps, perhaps you um, forget to convert to percent form. So, well, I'm going to like split up my recordings because I think sometimes if